Welcome back to the Mako Performance Podcast, where we talk about how to train smarter, work harder, and perform better. Today, we're going to talk about how to train around pain, physical limitations, mental barriers, everything that can basically set you up for burnout, injury, and not progressing over a lifetime. Because that is our ultimate goal, is to train everybody for a lifetime. The things we're going to talk about today, uh, there's big, there's like the big three that we really like to focus on every single day is scaling, modification, and progression. And a lot of times these these are thrown around interchangeably. You know, people will will just say, "Hey, here's the scale for the day," okay? And we don't always write out what the modifications are, but when we look at this. Um, these are definitely different and you should view them as a very different thing. Okay. Uh, scaling for the most part is what we're going to be doing to hit intensities and st the stimulus for the day. So that's bringing the weight down. That's taking the reps away, you know, taking some reps away or even shortening the time. If we have a workout that is supposed to be hit at max intensity, it's 500 meter row, 30 wall balls, 30 pull-ups, and you can hit that relatively unbroken and push it, good, check. That's your RX for the day. If you know, you know that that's gonna take you longer than five minutes, well, we can still hit that intensity, but maybe we shorten the row. So we, we, we scale the row back to a 400. We bring the wall balls back to 25 and we do maybe 20 pull-ups, okay? You are going to hit the same stimulus as somebody who can do that unbroken with less reps, but at the same intensity. So that's what we look at for scaling. When it comes to modification, this is where we're going to be changing a movement around a very specific limitation, okay? We talk about it all the time, at least amongst ourselves and in, in, in individual conversations, but there is no movement that is necessary for fitness. Okay, there's no one movement that you must do to be more fit. You don't need to snatch. You don't need to clean. We'd like you to if it's pain free, it feels good, and you can move well without any risk or at least low risk, then that's what we want to do. So we look at a modification of maybe that's where, um, you know, you come in and your knees banged up and you're looking at the board and you're like, holy shit, there's 100 squats today. And you're like, and, and you're just going to power through it that's wrong. You should talk to the coach. Um, we can either do that to a box, that would be a modification. Moving it to a kettlebell swing and changing the movement entirely is a modification. And that is what's going to allow you to train today and progress in the future. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind as a modification is all about changing movements. When it comes to progression, that's when we're looking at changing the movement. So let's say we have a, a snatch from the floor, okay? One of the progressions would be if you're missing the hip and you're missing those points of performance, then we go from the hang. And if we can't go from the hang, we go from the high hang. Or if it's a, a handstand push-up, we're taking that to you know adding pads to the top of our head or even doing some sort of pike push-up or even doing some sort of like seated press or something like that. So that's what progression is. At all times, all three of these things should be happening on a daily basis. Yeah, and I think, you know, just right off the rip, guys, like, um, you know, if you are coming in and there is something going on, um, we can't help you guys get to the specific scale, modification, or progression that's going to give you the best opportunity on the day to get the most out of the workout if we don't know. So it really comes down to communicating with your coach letting them know what's going on and, and the specific as specific as you can be with that so that way they can you know kind of shift things and pivot um in in the class on the day to make sure that you you still can get a really good workout in for the day yeah that's the thing we talked about it before but consistency is always going to be king okay uh we do believe in intensity we talk about intensity whether that being going long and slow and, and learning how to do that is super important and learning how to go hard is super important, but if you don't show up, it's not gonna happen, okay? So showing up, communicating with your coach, that's what you need to do. When it comes to our job, 
our job as coaches at Mako, and, and not every CrossFit gym slash functional fitness gym is gonna be the same, but I can tell you right now, the team that we have, their entire job is to be able to affect 20 of you guys on this individual level with those three things every single day. It is not a burden, it is not an extra task, no one's getting paid to just start the clock, okay? We are not clock watchers, we are not cheerleaders, we are coaches. So if you feel like that's not happening in, in your class hour or from the coach that you're specifically working with, just let us know. One of us know it's not like we're going to just automatically just can somebody for it. We need to do a better job of training those coaches to be able to do that. Okay, that is what my job is, that's what Aaron's job is, is to make sure that you guys are getting that experience no matter what hour of the day you come. So don't feel like you can't tell us because that's what we need to do to be able to help you succeed. And those three things, if you do that, you will be successful for a very long time. Yeah, I think the other thing too, guys, and, and you know, we, we always joke about it, cherry picking workouts, right? It's like, hey, I'm only gonna show up on the days where the whiteboard looks really good for what, what I like to do and what I'm good at. Um, you know, we, we really shouldn't be looking at it that way. Cause even if there is something that's like a burden to you, you know, running right now, like we, we are pushing a lot of running. Um, but even if there is like an actual limitation to where you can't run, like we're going to understand that we're going to work around that We're we're going to try to get you to a point where you can run eventually, but you know, we're going to sub it out for a bike or something else that's a little more feasible for you to get the same, same thing. So if you have movements that you've just typically avoided, you know, like he said, none of that's actually necessary. The specific movement, we can still get you guys through the workout and change things to a way that's still gonna allow you to get a really good day in. Yeah, running is a good one. That's a good example. Uh, and I am now making another critique to what we're writing. So we've been writing that extra conditioning work um, on those days where it's all just strength work. And there's like an outside of class conditioning. Well, as we transition from the first four weeks to the second four weeks, there's gonna be more emphasis on running as we're pre preparing people for Murph. And I have a non-runner, and I put it in quotes, non-runner option, and it has running in it. Uh, so what we're gonna try to do is try to find ways for you guys to run. That might be picking up a sandbag and walking for it, with, like, you know, 100 meters with a sandbag and then doing a 30 second on, 30 second off, shuffle and walk, you know, without the sandbag outside of that. We need to try to start hitting some of those things that you've you've kind of deemed as like not doable as long as you know it's pain free while doing it and afterwards you're not having this massive flare up on whatever your issue is okay you do want to be able to do everything like you do want to be able to run you do want to be able to do that whether you know it or not the more you can do the more functionality you have with your entire body the less chances you are to get hurt the, the better you know expressions of power, speed, strength that you can actually you know perform at, you are going to be in a better position. So constantly avoiding things and saying, well, that's not for me, I don't run, I don't do that. Um, there's a time for it, you know, whether that's like I just had an injury and then I haven't ramped back up. But once you've let that injury or that thing kind of you know subside, you need to be looking at an actual sustainable progression to getting you back up to fully using your body. And that's what we wanna help you guys with. Uh, and we're trying to throw those things into the workouts, into our you know scaling, progression, and uh, modifications. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, talking about like dealing with pain, dealing with injuries, dealing with, you know, limit you know, maybe more limitations kind of out of the picture. I think it's really important for athletes to understand just you know, when it's important to look at taking rest days, um, you know, we can't come in and train every day. It is important to think about like when you're taking those days, um, is that a complete day off? Are we looking at something more of like an active recovery day where we're still getting something done and, and really prepping us to come back in to get after it the next day? Um, so just like, what, what would you suggest for people on like, how often should they be resting? How should they decide if it's a complete rest day versus an active rest day? Um, you maybe just go further into that. Yeah, I do believe in like no days off with like some caveats to it. Um, you know, I do believe you should try to move every single day. Now there are times when, you know, you feel an illness coming on, uh, you know, or you didn't sleep very much and maybe you need to, instead of going to the gym, take a nap, 
take an extra mental health day. And I think that, but I think those should be very sparingly. Uh, but typically what we look at, um, and the way we try to write things too, is you'll get things in like 72 hours, right? So three days is what we're looking at. We say, hey, we hit something really hard. In that we might hit something else a little hard between that 72 hours. And by that, I mean like heavy or really hard intensity. We need to be moving at moderate and low intensity between those zones. So typically if it's like three days and you've hammered it, you need a day where it's active recovery. It's walking, it's running at a low heart rate, it's coming in and getting on the bike, it's coming in and doing some carries. You can always carry stuff, you can always ride the bike, you can always ski, you can do all those things. Basically that's why we write Thursdays the way we do. We've kind of built those in for you guys. Um, but you know, those typical Thursdays, you know, you can bank up like what we did on those days and you could come in and just do those on a Tuesday when, you know, you're like, I don't feel like hammering the class. As long as you're not doing it from an avoidance standpoint, like, you know, from your, you're avoiding something that you don't want to work on and you're just doing it because you need to do it. I think that's super important. Um, active recovery days, if you're feeling really sore, the last thing you should do is nothing. Okay. Like I, uh, you know, did the class, my biceps were really feeling it. Well, the next day I just did some like banded rows, like really light banded rows. Like I was like, I need to move these arms because tomorrow I'm going to really feel this. Um, so thinking about it is like that band work we do, we've talked about before is really good for upper body. So coming in and doing some banded work, whether that's just like simple extensions, curls, rows, very light, high rep, moving, skiing is good for the upper body. Uh, as long as you're, again, you're moving at a low intensity. The low intensity uh, component is really important. You know, as we look at like getting the, you know, pushing blood through the body, the only way to really do that is to increase the heart rate and to move. So getting fresh blood, you know, starts oxygenating the muscles, starts increasing that recovery process. That's what we're trying to do. And those can be done on any days where you feel like you need it. Um, we try to do our best again on a global scale or by like, by that I mean like big picture programming. We try to do that for you guys, but on the individual level, you should feel very comfortable with coming in and being like, hey, not really feeling it. I need something else and we'll give it to you. Yeah, I know. Like just personally, like with the, a lot of the weightlifters, um, you know, when they come in and it's like, I can just tell as they're starting to get rolling, it's like, hey, they're not moving the same way. Like the, the facial expression's a little different. They just seem a little down. Like, you know, it's like, hey, I know they've got outside stress going on. You know, those are the days where I'm like, hey guys, like you're gonna hit, you know, like whatever is absolutely essential in the day. And then, you know, I'm gonna have them drag the sled. I'm gonna have them do some just general phys GPP work and, you know, probably just some bodybuilding and we're gonna call it a day that's gonna allow them to come back in that next day and go back to, to the regular training that they should be doing. Yeah, so when to seek out medical intervention, okay? Now, having acute pain, my elbow hurts, whatever, every time I do this. If you don't let that cool down, it can turn into tendinopathy where you're gonna have constant pain for a long time and the recovery process and come back is gonna be a lot different, a lot more challenging. Um, if you're not seeing a bunch of local swelling in the elbow, then you're probably okay, but we need to like look at this, this should get better. So if it isn't getting better over a week, we do suggest you talk to CJ or Kaylee first before just going and get an MRI, all right? I, I do feel very confident in saying that you should at least talk to somebody who wants you to be able to move instead of somebody who wants to give you a surgery. Um, that entire business model is that. Now, there are some good orthopedics out there that will, you know, be like, hey, we don't need to do it. But I mean, I've been told I need surgery on my knee every time I've ever decided to go into Andrews. And I have yet to get the surgery and I'm running 30 miles a, a week and I'm squatting again and I'm completely pain free. Now it was a long road, it was tough and I had to scale everything back and I had to modify everything and, and look at this from a long progression, but it is doable. Um, not saying you have to go that route, but talking to CJ, he is, you know, you know, and again, I get to talk to him. Luckily I can call him or whatever, whatever I need. Um, it took him years for him to like, like let, like let it sink in for me what I needed to do. But once I actually implemented what he told me to do, it worked. 
it just took a lot longer than I wanted. And that's sometimes like the biggest thing is like time is your is your like best helper, but like your worst friend as a, as like the mental game goes. Yeah, <laughs> and you know there there's a a lot of people in the gym guys that have you know dealt with things that are, hey this is a consistent this isn't a, a a one time I woke up feeling it for the day and the next day I'm fine. This is like a, every day I'm coming in consistent thing. That's when you need to talk to them. Uh, and we've sent a lot of people to them already and you know myself being one of them um, they they're able to keep you moving they're regressing you know movements to something that is pain-free where you can move through the range of motion and then you're slowly building back up you know where you can go back into full training you know their goal is to keep you moving and build you back to being able to train the way that you really want to and you may need surgery okay I don't want to say like I do want to say that like I'm not saying like no surgery ever I mean, you got a baker cyst that's you know the size of your thumb on your wrist and you're not able to hit a front front rack you need to get it removed i mean it's never going to get better um no matter what you do so do keep that in mind too like i'm not saying like never do that but you know we are saying that you should definitely try to exhaust things knowing that when you go you need to be as prepared as you can when you go to the surgeon to kind of know what they're going to say um you know if you're not prepared for it you're going to go in there you're going to get doomsday i mean i was told like I'm not gonna be able to walk. Like, I mean, I've been, I was told a lot of stuff and it, you know, it, it did change like how, you know, I was like, I'm done as an athlete. And, and you know, I, I carried that for years really. Um, until recently I just decided like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an athlete again. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, I'm just gonna do the work. Um, so just know that, like, cause I want you guys to be set up mentally uh, as best you can when you do go into those situations. But, you know, first again, talking to a coach about, you know, modifying your your movements if we can't do it and it's beyond our scope we're gonna send you to cj or kaylee um if it's not clearing up still then that's when we have to look at something a little bit more um you know with that medical intervention yeah you know it, it, it should be that last resort guys because at the end of the day like there are situations where it's gonna be required you know catastrophic injury you know it may, it's in the gym out of the gym you know something happens um, but really what you're doing there, guys, is you're really creating additional trauma. Like you already have an injury. They're going to go in with a knife and cut you open and, and, you know, cause more damage than is already there to, to repair. Um, and it's, it, it is going to be a longer and more painful road, uh, doing that in my opinion. Yeah. Well, they removed my meniscus, like they removed it and they don't even do that anymore. But when I got surgery back in the day, that's what they did when your meniscus was torn, like it was torn to the level mine was. Uh, they just remove it, pull that thing out. Okay, cool. Now what? They don't really worry about that. I felt good, but now we're looking at this 20 years later. How do I feel? It is a little different, um, and it, it changes the way I have to do things because I, I you know, I didn't know what I know now. Um, and you know, that's okay. Life that happens in life, and uh, you know, you just gotta keep hammering. So, um, coming back from injury, though, that is where really understanding, like how to like I know I've told I've talked to a lot of people and I try and I try to really like get them to grasp these like like it's like how long is this gonna take it's like I don't know it's it could be four weeks it could be 14 weeks it could be 24 weeks it could be a year and and but you got to look at like check marks it's like did I restore my range of motion how long did it take did I do things to over you know did I overdo it at one point and set myself back learning that like graded exposure curve you know that cj finally drilled into my head of like if you did that and it caused you to flare up you can't do that yet okay cool check and then being like okay well i'm not even going to get near that for a while i'm going to do something so low that i know it's not going to hurt and i'm going to do that for six to eight weeks and then i'm going to try then i'm going to test something a little bit a little bit more aggressive and if that doesn't hurt that's my new training standard yeah, you got to think of it as a slow drip, guys. Um, you know, it, if you're coming in and expecting to go right back to the level of performance that you had prior to the injury, you're only going to end up dealing with the same symptoms and the same injury over and over and over and over again. And, you know, coming from somebody who's, who's done that, um, it's not a fun process. It can be really discouraging. Um, same story with CJ. Hey, dude, yeah. you just got to do less of that. You can't. Yeah. You can't go overhead for a while. Like, um, you know, last year I couldn't snatch for what four and a half months. 
as a weightlifter, I was like, I might be done. I might be trying to get surgery in the next few months. And, you know, slowly he was able to talk me off the ledge and show me what I needed to do. And I stuck to the process and we're, we're back to where we want to be. Yeah, guys. So again, just having those tools um, at your disposal, we're here to help you. If it's beyond our scope, we will tell you. I will we'll kick it to CJ and they will obviously do the same thing with kicking you guys to surgery. But definitely, um, you know, don't just push through pain. This isn't like, you know, when you're coming off this, so say it's a, uh, it's a shoulder thing. Well, we can find a way to get after it today. Like, that's the thing. Like, you start finding ways to just hammer. And mine was like, I got really good at the ski erg, you know? I was like, well, I'm just gonna hammer the ski erg until I can bike again, and then until I can jump again, and then until I can run again. So it's like, you can find things to train on and ways to train to keep your mind sharp and to know that you were able to push yourself today as hard as possible, knowing you're not doing any harm or doing this thing, uh, you know, pushing this pain, this, this constant pain cycle. Uh, that is easy to fall into. I mean, if you've trained and whatever, it doesn't matter what you do. There are just like when hours accumulate and uh, I can't remember the exact number of injury, injuries when it comes to CrossFit per training hours, but it's super low, like from an actual injury standpoint, like it's, it's lower than most sports, um, if not all sports. And the thing is, is like the difference there is like quality movement, proper scaling, proper progressions, all those things are, are what's gonna even extend those hours even further. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that's all we have. Again, if you have any questions about, um, you know, anything you want us to address on the, on the podcast or you want to just talk in person, please let us know. You can reach out to me by my email at brandon at makocrossfit.com or on Instagram at brandon underscore Massey. Yeah, and you can reach me at aaron at makocrossfit.com or adenny19. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one.